So with the recent reveal of how we can expect to customise our characters within Star Citizen, I wanted to delve further into and break down what we saw to not only make it easier to understand, but also see if there's anything we missed. When it comes to creating your character, obviously you'll start with the face. Now we saw a very early work in progress of how this process will work. The It's actually outsourced to a studio called Three Lateral, who scan the faces of actors using a rig of around 50 DSLR cameras, creating kind of a mesh. When we get our hands on this, it will be through a process likely very similar to what we saw, but with maybe a bit more updated UI. For the demonstration, there was a choice between eight male and eight female character heads. This choice will grow before we get our hands on it. It's just the base amount of characters they have. And after choosing the gender, you can then pick which general head shape to begin with, and then you can start molding it. Something to point out is that male head number seven is actually the character Miles Eckhart, which we saw in the 3.0 demo last year. Just thought it was worth mentioning. Anyway, once you choose a head shape, you can adjust the shader to match the picture which alters the skin colour. Now this is all done under the uh, the character tab at the top and once you're happy with the head shape and skin colour then, then you can switch to the region tab and begin moulding the facial features to suit whatever you want. We can see that the highlighted area that you hover over is each region of the face and there appears to be five regions at the moment. You've got eyes, ears, mouth, jaw and nose. Possibly we'll have more when it's finished but to be honest that's practically all you'll need and once you settle on one of those you can then adjust that region using a series of sliders to shape the look that you want now each slider represents how close a look to that that you want to that specific head or feature uh, that the variables go from about 0.000 to 1 but switching you can go from the eyes to the nose to the mouth and it gives you access to pull push stretch mold and sort of change the position of each of these items till you get the face that you want once more faces are introduced, there will obviously be a lot more variation. But as Chris Roberts said a while ago, he doesn't want to create over-the-top sort of grotesque characters as this would detract from the overall realism. So it's going to stick within the realm of reality and look quite normal. But close up, you can see the faces have a lot of detail on. They are very incredible, the amount of detail these faces have. You can see the skin, it's all mottled. It looks realistic. It doesn't look like a, a pasted face. But something useful that I noticed was that you can save a character any time. Um, copying that specific character if you are happy with them but not 100% certain that you want that character or not so you, then you can continue on creating and it saves all these sort of presets so that you can choose which one you prefer but when it comes to animation of the face it's sort of set on an idle animation which sort of keep, makes the character just look round, blinking acting just natural but then there was another option called ashes to ashes which reads a script to show off the animation and you can actually change the facial features and use the sliders as he's animating which is very very useful but this is all audio driven animation it's, it's it makes sure that the audio stays in sync with the animation itself and going back to those multiple characters that you may have created you can have more playing at once to see which one you prefer it even reacts to light there you could shine a light in his eye and he'll squint and still deliver the script which if that happens in game is going to be very cool especially when explosions or well, anything that's bright, a torch gets shown in your face, you'll see the characters actually squinting. Now, this should allow for enough customization to create completely unique characters in Star Citizen to the point that I, you know, I hope, I'm not 100% sure about this, but you will be able to pick out your friend from a crowd, which means that you no longer have to wait for your friend's name to pop up above his head. You'll just be able to recognize them. Three Lateral did mention that this is a way of generating procedural humans, so if that's the case, then it'll also allow for the variation when CIG creates unique characters to not have the same person running around everywhere on screen, which is just going to be amazing. But anyway, after looking at the faces, they moved on to clothing and armour, and this is sort of dressing your character in whatever gear they want. Just like ships, CIG needed a way for the player to change not only the, the loadout like we see in Star Marine, but everything from clothing like shorts, t-shirts, to adding hair, uh, armor, weapons, and eventually, I, I would have thought, tattoos, maybe earrings as well, if they get them implemented. But what we see, again, was very work in progress, and the UI that they used to demonstrate was the ship port modifi modification tool, so the, eventually they'll have its own UI, so don't worry about that. But the first screen, you can see a semi-naked character with about seven available slots. Now, these are armor, undersuit, clothing feet, clothing legs, um, clothing torso. We had two clothing torsos. Uh, head item and hair item now starting with the hair you can select from a list of different hairstyles to be honest I think I would prefer this to be in the actual face customization rig 
where you, you hopefully you'll be able to adjust the length and the color. I'm not sure how that's going to work. I would have thought they'd implement it that way, but we'll see. Still time yet. But then if you go to legs, you can pick from a list of different pants or shorts. Currently, it is a small list of clothing. More clothing will be added before the release, as we know they are still working on it. But consistently throughout the game's development after launch, there'll still be clothing and, and items coming up. But the same goes for the torso, for the feet, everywhere on the body. The great feature is layering as well, which is why we have two torso slots. So you can have a t-shirt and then a jacket over the top. And they won't clip through eventually, you know. Currently, you can see a bit of clipping, but that will be gone. But to hold the frame, the UI is the ship UI, um, as I've said. So the item names will change and it will be more user-friendly. But potentially things that... You know, different listings could be altered for things like condition, colour, maybe even things like the location where you bought them and the price. Just as an example, there will be more practical columns. But I love the example of the civilian clothing with the holster. It looks sort of like planet side security or if you're just wandering the streets and you, you make sure you've got a sidearm just in case. But from there we went to armour. Now this is very, very cool. Similar to clothing, armour can be selected and slotted into place. It starts with an undersuit. Now an undersuit is sort of your flight suit. And they're skin tight full body one piece suits which are essential just to heading into space these work as maybe thermal and protection creating a seal around the body and from the list we can see the choices of flight suits and armor you have field recon suit for light armor the calico i'm not sure what that is now we've got the orc uh, mark x medium the odyssey flight suit and the mca mark ii which can all be purchased from the garrity defense on crusader you have the dust-up, which I believe is the pirate version of these. And the navy pilot suit, which I don't think we've seen yet. But now you can see that each suit, once fitted, has item ports to attach more armor or weapons and attachments to specific areas. Clicking on the head gives you a choice of helmets. And then clicking on one of the other three options, you have chest, arms and legs. And this gives you the options to add further armor plating. Currently, they say there's only four while they're developing the tech. More will come later. Maybe things like individual arms or maybe you can divide your arms into four arm and so forth. But you can see from the current choices between the UEE and the slaver options, even though they are not specific to each other, they still fit together so you can, you don't, and they don't look too bad. So you can wear, if you wanted, a pirate version and a UEE version. But, but when you get into the verse, there will be so much more choice. It will be awesome finding buying or you know even salvaging more clothing and armor from around the verse on your travels and another great thing about the armor is that you won't consistently stick to just one certain roles certain jobs may require specific armor or specific type of suit so radiation protection or even things like thermal protection when you head down on maybe an ice planet you'll always need a varying option of clothing and an armor you won't just stick to the same one all the time we got to see some cool lighting on the leg plates now it does look cool but I'm not too sure I like this because it will give you, you know, playing with real players online, this may give you away at night. Uh, AI, fair enough, they may not spot it, they may not be programmed to spot it, but real players will see that and you'll just stand out. But other ports that are available are to attach weapons, grenades and magazines. And when prepping for a job, you and your friends will decide which weapons to take. You know, do you choose a long range weapon or a close combat? Plus ensuring that you all have the necessary grenade types for a situation. So if you're on planet and you want to get away from and you're under heavy fire, Throwing smoke and so forth would, would come in handy. But I do hope that you only have the ammunition shown via the magazines that you are carrying. So if you've used all your magazines, then you are completely out of ammunition and you have to come back and restock. This again will go into the being more tactical and making sure that you conserve your ammunition. The other benefit to having equipment shown on your body is the ability to perform a recon of an approaching group. So seeing what each player is carrying allows you to determine and prioritize threats. For example, setting up, if you're setting up a trap using a distress beacon and a group of players land and then start approaching this beacon, a sniper or spotter on your team could recon the group, refer the information to you of what weapons and equipment they, the group are, are, are carrying, giving you more advantage. So if someone has maybe a ship, a ground to ship rail gun, he would be a priority target if you plan to bring air support in. So taking him down first or maybe a heavy machine gun or whatever, you know, really helps determine the battlefield tactic. Anyway, we could also see some weapon mods. These are still to come into the game. Weapons not yet available as well were seen, but they're not currently available to us. But they look like they are an engine like the P8AR rifle from Bering and also the P8SC SMG from, from Bering as well. Plus something called the HP21 Thunder Burst Cannon, which I'm not too sure. It could be the Devastator double barrel, but I don't think that's just, I think that's just concept at the moment. But just to point out, the, the equipment worn on the character 
will actually sway and move depending on the movement of the player. This also works with clothing, so like the Sand Nomad and his cape. Your hair as well will, will be determined by this. The attention to detail is fantastic and it'll just look so cool when you're all running as a group or fighting or even just chilling out, who knows. But we also got to see the in-engine RSI Explorer suit, which was concepted only recently from what I can gather. Um, and it starts with the undersuit, they had the light armor and the helmet. It looks like it's already in engine now, ready to go. Hopefully we'll get this for 2.6.2, but I'm thinking 3.0 would be more, more likely. But each armor will affect your movement depending on its weight. So for example, uh, you won't be able to pilot in heavy armor, uh, you, but you will be able to carry more, more weapons. You'll be able to carry heavier weapons perhaps, but move a lot slower. So there are swings and roundabouts to every item that you, you wear. Now this is just a glimpse into what will eventually be how we customise our characters as well as dress them and equip them and it truly shows the level of detail that CIG are going to. Everyone will look unique and I think when this finally comes to us, the players, the game will feel completely different. It'll feel like an actual game. People will be individual. Just so exciting. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this. I am truly excited to get this. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Twitch, Twitter and Instagram. Hit that like button and I shall see you next time.